You know, I've been trying to teach my dog how to heal, but I'm not making much progress. Well, I'm sorry you're not making much progress, but that is the perfect segue into our segment on operant conditioning. Now, I think I've heard about operant conditioning, but I'm not sure I know what it is. Basically, it's a type of learning based on consequences, either rewards or punishments that follow a voluntary behavior. It's the type of learning involved in animal training, but I'm guessing that parents of young children will recognize what we're talking about here, too. Okay. Okay, so psychologists generally divide the consequences following a behavior into two groups. Reinforcement increases the probability of a behavior occurring again in the future, while punishment decreases the probability of a behavior occurring again. Then there are two types of reinforcement and two types of punishment. A positive reinforcement might be receiving a treat for good behavior. A negative reinforcement might be buckling your seatbelt to stop the annoying sound your car makes to remind you to do it. A positive punishment might be touching a hot stove or being yelled at. A negative punishment might be having your cell phone taken away or being grounded. I'm glad we're talking about this because, as you know, my dog is a bit of a mess. Totally stubborn and he doesn't do anything he doesn't want to do. Animal trainers use operant conditioning, don't they? Right. Reinforcement and punishment can have a powerful influence on behavior. Bears can learn to ride motorcycles. Dogs can obey traffic signals. Let's see how John Moon uses operant conditioning to teach dogs like Rainbow to help people with special needs. Uh, my name is John Moon. I work for the uh, Needs uh, Assistance Dog Organization in Princeton, Massachusetts. My role is as Director of Communications and Programs there. Uh, Needs started off uh, 35 years ago as a hearing ear dog program. Uh, that is a program which we still have today and NEEDS is the oldest hearing dog program in the United States. So uh, NEEDS actually has uh, over 35 years developed additional programs beyond the hearing dog program to help people with a physical disability. That has also uh, grown over the past number of years to include uh, children with autism, also therapy dogs and perhaps ministry dogs as well. Uh, there are dogs out there that now detect peanut oil uh, a lot of allergies to, to peanut oil. There are seizure alert uh, dogs. People that have seizures as a result of epilepsy. Dogs are trained oftentimes to alert 30 to 40 minutes before a seizure actually, before there's an onset of a seizure. Uh, and so the dogs being capable of, of uh, uh, understanding that and being able to alert to that makes them their, the functionality of what they do very, very important to someone's survival, uh, if, you know, preventing life-threatening um, instances. When, when I mentioned about uh, chaining commands together, yes, you're really trying to, to string different commands together, almost like a link of a chain, so that it forms a very, very strong bond. Uh, the command, you are uh, training individual uh, tasks uh, at one point, opening up that door, for example, and rewarding the dog uh, with treats. Uh, we tend to uh, use positive reinforcement uh, for the dogs. Dogs love to eat and they're usually highly motivated by food. And this is why I've got a little treat bag here uh, on, my, on my belt. And we also will train our clients to do the same thing, rewarding them for the tasks that they perform. That's pretty amazing. Definitely not the sort of thing an average dog can do. One of the ways that Rainbow and dogs like her learn these abilities is through shaping. Shaping is learning behaviors through successive approximations of desired behaviors in response to consequences. It involves a lot of repetition and patience, but the end result is totally worth it. Actually, that's a great example of what a powerful force positive reinforcement can be. It totally is. I think now is a good time to break down what's known as the schedules of reinforcement. It isn't really complicated in that it refers to when and how often we reinforce a behavior. Hence the term schedule. Keep in mind that either positive or negative reinforcement may be used. The big difference is that on the one hand, we have continuous reinforcement. And on the other, we have the different variations on partial reinforcement. Okay, didn't you just say this isn't complicated? It's not, trust me. Here's how it works. First, we have continuous reinforcement. A real world example is when you put your money into a soda machine, push the button, and a soda comes out every time. That's continuous reinforcement. The flip side of continuous reinforcement is partial reinforcement, which, as the name states, means that the reinforcement happens only part of the time. There are four schedules of partial reinforcement. The first is fixed interval reinforcement. 
An example of this is if you have a job, you don't get paid as you perform each task, you get paid once a week or once every two weeks at fixed intervals. There is variable ratio reinforcement. Slot machine payouts are a good example of this reinforcement schedule. You never know when or if you're going to hit a jackpot no matter how long you play. Then there's fixed ratio reinforcement. This is when a response is reinforced only after a specified number of responses. It's like when you play a video game and you can only advance after you've collected a certain amount of tokens. Finally, there is variable interval reinforcement. This is what happens when you check your email. Emails can come in at any time, so there's a variation in the amount of time between when they are received. Psychologists can assess the effectiveness of various forms of reinforcement by taking the reward away entirely and then seeing how long the behavior persists, be it putting money into the soda machine, showing up for work, or feeding the slot machine. Which one do you think would persist the longest? I guess the variable ratio reinforcement behavior, feeding the slot machine because you can't predict the payoff, so you always think, next time, next time, next time. You're right. That highly unpredictable payoff can have an incredibly long-lasting and destructive effect on some people. The fact is, partial reinforcement often has a more powerful influence on behavior than continuous reinforcement does. In other words, we tend to work harder and to be more persistent when our hard work is repaid intermittently rather than each time we do something well. I need to figure out a way to use variable reinforcement to teach my dog to behave. Only problem is I kind of give him everything he wants. Continuous reinforcement strikes again.